Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Next year is New Jersey's next big election when Governor Phil Murphy is expected to seek a second term. He has not announced yet, but three Republicans have. Just last week, former chair of the Republican Party, Doug Steinhardt, announced that he was running for governor. So has businessman Hirsch Singh. And former Assemblyman Jack Chitterelli, who you'll hear from in just a second, announced all the way back in January. Assemblyman, as always, thank you so much for your time. Your race for the governor changed in the last couple of weeks when John Bramnick decided he was going to get out of the race. Could you comment on that first? And then I want to have I have some follow up questions about things he said to me in an interview. It's not an easy decision to make for some, Larry. I understand and appreciate where John is with his decision. He seems very comfortable with it. Uh, Listen, I believe competition makes us better. So if there's people that want to get in this race, get in the race. It's interesting. He told me when I asked him why he got out of the race, he said it was obvious to him that he wasn't gaining traction because of his stance on Donald Trump. He said the Republican Party has really moved to be more Trumpian than he would like. And because he's been outspoken about Donald Trump, he didn't see himself as a viable candidate. Do you see the same thing he saw? No, Larry, I've been on the campaign trail now close to three years, 11 months as an official candidate. That's not the feeling I get as I go up and down the state. I've been very well received everywhere I go, talking about how to fix New Jersey. I think the one thing I need to do is rally all Republicans on the one thing they all agree on, which is not having Phil Murphy get a second term. So it's not Trumpian. You're saying that, because uh, I've talked to you before about Donald Trump, and, and there's some things you like and there's some things you don't like. And, and if, you, if I'm putting words in your mouth, please interrupt me and tell me really what you, what you want to say about Donald Trump. But I know from the past that there's many things you don't like. You, you aren't a full-throated supporter of Donald Trump, but you don't believe that's going to hurt you. I said what I said about Donald Trump back in 2015, Larry, from the time that he was elected. I supported his policies, which I believe work for the nation. He played hardball with China in the right kind of way. He secured our borders. He won the war on ISIS. He made peace peace in the Middle East. He did great things for our economy. And he transformed the federal bench with his conservative justice appointments. All those things worked for the nation. As governor, I would talk to him if he were still president on things like funding for the Gateway Project. We want funding for the Gateway Project. We want our salt deduction back. And across New Jersey, we don't want offshore drilling. As the advocate for 9 million New Jerseyans, those are things that I would talk to him about. But again, as I go up and down the state, here's the great thing about 2021. It's all about New Jersey. There's only two governor races in the entire country next year. I'm at the top of the ticket. This race is about fixing New Jersey. And I'm going to prove to people of New Jersey that I'm the best person to do that. You say you're at the top of the ticket, but recently there has been an election for chair of the Republican Party. You backed Bob Hubin and Doug Steinhardt backed Michael Lavery. Michael Lavery won. And they, uh, at least in the papers, they consider that a big victory for Doug Steinhardt. What, how do you see it? Bob Hugan was a late entry into that race, but still, in my opinion, a very, very compelling one. Bob's ability to do fundraising and his ability to recruit candidates, I thought would have been very good for the New Jersey Republican Party. Uh, Mike Lavery won fair and square. We go forward, Mike Lavery. But I'll tell you, Larry, as much as I'm determined to fix New Jersey, I'm also determined to fix the New Jersey Republican Party. Uh, We don't have to lose elections the way we've been doing. And I've got ideas on how better to run the organization. Well, I wasn't going to get into that right away. But since you bring it up, is that going to be one of your tactics, one of your attacks on Doug Steinhardt that he hasn't been effective? Uh, I think we could do a much better job with candidate recruitment. I think we could do a much better job with fundraising. And I think we need to do a better job of communicating to New Jerseyans what the Republican Party can mean to the quality of life here in New Jersey. It was a bit of a surprise when, it, when he, it, he was obviously running for governor a while back. And because that was a bit of a surprise, I think some people were taken aback that the chair of the Republican Party was interested in that race. And there was a feeling by some candidates that he might be interested in his more race than their race. Is that a fair criticism? All I'll say is this. Once I win the primary, I'm the titular head of the Republican Party, and I'd like to see changes in the way we go about business with the state committee, one of which would be that no state chairman should be somebody who's going to be seeking office in the future. And and go go a little deeper on that. What, What happens when somebody that uh, is a state chair is seeking office. What happens to the rest of the races? What happens to the party? 
It presents a conflict of interest, if you will. One of your jobs as a state chair is to raise money for the state party. If you're preparing to run for office for two, six, 12, 18 months, are you doing that well when you're thinking about your own fundraising? It presents a challenge. Let's look past the primary for a second and talk about Governor Murphy, because when you got into the race, there was no pandemic. You, you got into the race very early, uh, or at least it was at its infancy. And uh, be, because of that, you were talking about taxes at the time, and you were talking about uh, business, the business climate in New Jersey and, and what's going to happen if we keep going down this path. Have, has, have the issues changed? Well, in one way, yes. In another way, no. Uh, the way no is there are four crises in this state, Larry, that paralyze us economically and fiscally and deny every middle class New Jerseyans from achieving their American dream. We still have a property tax crisis. We still have a business climate crisis. We still have a public pension crisis. And the way we do affordable housing is just nuts here in New Jersey. Those four crises persist. With his handling of the pandemic, I'm going to be talking an awful lot about his handling of things like nursing homes. OK, those deaths in our nursing homes are because he ordered COVID-19 patients into nursing homes. That's why he's given them legal immunity now. Also, his handling of the economy and what he's done to Main Street, mom and pop shops, small businesses. There are a lot of inconsistencies in his executive orders that exacerbated things, making things worse for small business. And the third thing is schools. I believe we need to get children back into the classroom. So the, his handling of the pandemic has given us only more to talk about. Yeah, it, it, it certainly has, but he still seems to be popular. The last poll that was taken was October, I'll grant you, uh, from Fairleigh Dickinson, but he was at 60%. Now, that, that's a drop off of what it was at 72%, and, and you could see that as a precipitous drop, but it's still 60%. It's tough to beat, isn't it? In the aftermath of the Persian Gulf War, George Herbert Bush was at 82%, Larry. 18 months later, he lost to an unknown governor from Arkansas. I'm not unknown in the state of New Jersey. I'm going to make my case. And you're exactly right. He's already off 15 points in the three polls that have been taken over the last nine months. And in all three polls, he's underwater on the economy. Well, I really appreciate the time. It was great to talk to you. Uh, I know you got a, a long road ahead in this campaign, and we hope to talk to you again. Well, here's the thing, Larry. At our age, time goes real fast. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Thanks. Thanks for throwing me into that. <laughs> Former Assemblyman and Republican candidate for governor, Jack Cittarelli. When Jersey Matters continues, Christmas means poinsettias, or is it poinsettias? We'll talk about that with Gunther Lennon, who grows the Christmas flowers in New Jersey, next.